Star Wars Day. That's May the 4th. You know, it's May the 4th be with you. You know, I feel like I've sold that joke so many times. It's just like, either you already know it and you're like, okay, we get it. Or you've never heard it before and you probably don't care. But I care. So I'm making a video about this TIE Bomber. And in fact, we're going to model this TIE Bomber, uh, both the physics of it and the 3D of it in Python. And, and I, it's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun. Just a comment. You may like the TIE Bomber. I like the TIE Bomber because for me, it was like one of when it, it, I think that I'm pretty sure the first time we see this is in Empire Strikes Back. And the first, so it's, it's like one of the first new kind of TIE Fighters, right? We had the TIE Fighter in Star Wars and then we had Darth Vader's TIE Fighter. So I guess that one counts too. And then this one. And it's just kind of weird, you know, I like it. You know, it was it was what really attracted me to Star Wars in that there were these things like, I don't know what's going on, and that's what I loved about it. Okay, but let's get on with the show. And I just messed up there, let's see. Okay, so I actually want to look at this scene from Empire Strikes Back. So here's some TIE Fighters and some TIE Bombers, spoiler alert, um... Han and Leia and Chewbacca and C-3PO are hiding in an asteroid and the uh, and Darth Vader wants to find them. So he's bombing. He's It's like, let's bomb this asteroid to get them to come out. And we can use this to kind of figure out what's going on. But first, let's consider the following. I, I have to say this because if we're talking about physics. We're talking about science. And so science is just, you know, what we have with science. And then we have things like science fiction. And, you know, one of the, I'm trying to think of what, what's the best example of science fiction. Um, I think 2001 is a pretty good one. It's probably not the best. But science fiction uses ideas of science in the plot. Uh, they use scientific ideas. And so 2001 definitely does that. Space travel is very realistic and things like that. And then we have, don't get mad. I'm just going to say it, space fantasy. So, and I love Star Wars, and I don't care that it doesn't follow the rules of physics. Don't care. I love Star Wars. I love physics, so I can do them together. And that's what I'm going to do. So, and if you don't want to call Star Wars space fantasy, I'm cool with that. I like that there's things like magic in this. You could go ahead and say, what about superheroes? You love superheroes. Is that space fantasy too? No, it's just normal fantasy, right? Because there's not a lot of science fiction, especially in the way Marvel's gone now, but... Still, I don't care what you call it. It's a story. I love telling stories, and I love physics. So let's get into an analysis. I'm going to start off with this. So here are three ways a plane could drop a package. Okay, and I've modeled all three of these. We're going to think about this in terms of the way the bombers drop the bombs in Star Wars. Okay, they look, A and B look <clears throat> very similar. C just goes straight down. And so you, the question is, which one which one's the correct motion? Um, <clears throat> this is a great question for introductory students. Uh, a lot of students think probably B. They think, oh, C does not look right. It doesn't just drop straight down. If you drop, it doesn't drop straight down. But I don't think it's A either. So, so B is kind of an in-between uh, answer. But, of course, you probably already know the answer. And the answer is uh, B. And <clears throat> the package, if there's no air resistance... Okay, and a lot of cases you can model that as being no air resistance. Then the package is right under the plane the whole time that it moves forward. So the, the, the plane's moving with a constant velocity of V0 in the X direction. And the package only has one force acting on it, the downward gravitational force in the negative Y direction. So that means that if we think about the net force as mass times acceleration, and if we say the net force in the X direction is zero, then the acceleration is zero because that's mass times acceleration. And so that's the change in X velocity or the change in time. So the X velocity has to be constant. And it moves at a constant X velocity and accelerates in the Y direction. And this is normal projectile motion. And so you wouldn't even think that the tie bomber would do that, right? Because here the acceleration is due to the gravitational force from the Earth. And an asteroid is much smaller than the Earth. But there we have it. Okay, let's look at the actual scene and see if we can get some values for uh, the velocity and the acceleration of the bombs, which we can. So here I'm going to use, we're looking at this scene right here, and we have these TIE bombers. And there's a website, Wikipedia, which is awesome, lots of great information. And they have a TIE bomber, and they have 
the size. So it says 9.3 meters. I don't even know how they got that. Don't really care. I could estimate that myself, but I'm just going to go with what they have. 9.3 meters. So we know the width is 9.3 meters. Now I want to use a video analysis and do a video analysis of this. So here is my video analysis triangle. And I like to, to include this when we talk about video analysis. So in video analysis, I'm going to look at the location of an object in each frame. So there's actually three things. There's the scale, the distance scale. I, if I know the distance scale, which I do in this case, because I can mark it based on the width of that tie bomber, then I know the scale. Next is the time scale. So this is what's the time between frames. So, and I know this is a silly thing because it's not a real video, but I can say if it's a 24 frames per second, then each frame is 1 24th of a second. Okay. Now that may not be true if it's like a, a matrix movie with slow motion, then the frame rate is not the real time. And so I'd have to, to figure that out. And then finally I have I put the acceleration, but the motion. Normally we deal with the acceleration of an object. If I know the acceleration, then that's good. But this triangle, if you know two of these things, you can find the third. So in this case, I know the scale, I know the size of the tie bomber, and I assume that the frame rate's right, so I can find that acceleration. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna find the vertical acceleration of that bomb from that video. Let's get to it. I'm using tracker video analysis. There are a couple of video analysis programs out there. I really like this one. I've used it for a long time. It's free. It runs on lots of different platforms. Um, it has a lot of features, and you can download it. So the first thing you're going to do here is to uh, set the origin. In this case, this this scene with the TIE fighter coming right towards you, it's really towards you. It's really nice because uh, the 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 fake camera doesn't move. I don't. It might actually be a real camera. Huh, I wonder about that. I wonder how they filmed this. I mean, it's not CGI. Those are actual models. So it's a real camera, pretty sure. Um, the camera doesn't move. So once I set that scale rate, uh, the scale based on the width of that bomber, even though it gets closer to me, I don't care. I'm watching the, the, the bomb drop. Now the bomb does move forward and backwards a little bit, but if the camera is far enough away, that change in distance isn't gonna be that big of a deal. So I, I set my axis, that's those cyan lines, I set my scale, and then what I do is I just mark the location of the bomb in each frame after that, and it looks like this. Now, <clears throat> for some reason, the bomb I picked, it like skipped a frame, it, it, it just disappeared. I don't know why, and, and I don't think the other bombs did that, but I just picked one bomb, and I looked at it. And so here you see what the data looks like, I'm just kind of trying to show you what it would look like in tracker video analysis, and so you don't have to do that for yourself. Okay, let's look at, that shows the X motion. I don't really care about the X motion. I care about the Y motion. So here's the Y motion of that bomb. I only get a few frames of data, but it's good enough. And I mean, it kind of looks like it's accelerating. It's not quite clear. It's not a perfect fit, but I can say it's accelerating. Okay. Um, and, and so from this, I can fit uh, a parabola to the data because that would be a uh, constant acceleration would be a parabolic fit and tracker does that for me and it and then I can say well if it is a constant acceleration it would have this equation of motion the final position is at any time is the initial position times the velocity initial velocity t times t plus one half the vertical acceleration times t squared tracker gives me that data it says me it gives me a fit equation and it gives me that a parameter as negative 2.179 times 10 to the 2 so from that I can say that a parameter is one half the acceleration and so the acceleration in the y direction is yet negative 436 meters per second squared that's huge so which is okay right one doesn't have to be real it's a story two you don't know what's going on maybe that bomb has a rocket pushing it down you don't know that you don't know. And then the thing we get from here is the the height based on the uh, the scale of the Tie Fighter and the distance the bomb drops. I get the height of the Tie Fighter above the surface of the asteroid. That'd be useful. Okay, now there's an there's another scene. I have actually this is whoever made this scene is like, hey, I know in in thirty eighty when it come out eighty three eighty three so forty. 40 years ago, 
someone said, hey, Rhett's going to want to analyze this. So let's make sure that we give him a front view and not move the camera and a top view and just move the camera slightly. So here's looking at the top for a similar motion. I can assume that it's the same bomb, even though I don't know it's the same bomb. <clears throat> I can again scale the motion. So here's my tie bomber right there. Uh, I, the, the camera does move, but I can move my reference frame in each frame. Now, there is a parallax problem. You know, if you if you think about the camera moving and then we have the motion of the tie bomber and the motion of the background, they don't they don't all move the same way. And further things don't move as much. But if the camera's far away compared to the distance of the <clears throat> between the tie bomber and the, the ground, it's not so bad. So I'm just gonna assume it's okay. So once I do that, I can mark the lo the the in this case, it looks like the Y direction, but it's actually what we would call the X direction of the bomb. And I can get that the, the motion of both the tie bomber, the forward motion of the tie bomber, and the motion of the, the bomb. So let's look at, <coughs> excuse me, the, the tie bomber. Here, this is the Y position, but it tells me the velocity of the tie bomber moving very constant velocity. And, and I get right down here fitting a straight line, 3.33 <coughs> And it's times 10 to the 1. You can't see that. So 33 meters per second. Now look at the look at that. The bomb. We let's look at the motion of the bomb. It's actually going back. It has a negative velocity. <coughs> Excuse me. We can find the slope of that negative 44 meters per second. That's actually kind of strange. So the tie bomb is coming this way, and it shoots the 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 bomb out backwards. Okay, this is something I just like to add on here. This is uh, the frame corrected view from Tracker. So once I mark the motion of that, I can get the frame. And and actually, what what you can kind of see from here is that it's not probably not a directly overhead view. So my assumptions are probably wrong. So when it looks like it's dropping backwards, it's actually just because we're not directly overhead. We're looking at it from the back a little bit. Um, that's kind of hard to tell exactly, so we're gonna we can play around with that and fix it later. But, but that's just where we are. Okay, so let's build a Python model for the plane, but make it look like a tie bomber, and then we'll build a tie bomber. So, here are some of the important details, and I'm gonna go over this whole program, and I'll give you this code down below. So, I'm using uh, Web V Python, also called Glow Script, and. Uh, it allows us to make a 3D animation. That's why I made those initial animations in. So the first thing I have right here is a scene.userzoom equals false. That just says, I'm gonna make a thing and I don't want to accidentally zoom in and out with the person. So that's what that's for. The ground is just that uh, ground. It's a type of object of a box. So I'll talk about boxes later. And then the plane is a box. I give it a position, a size, a color, and I make it leave a trail. G is the gravitational field. Ball is the package that's gonna be the bomb. <clears throat> it's a sphere. And then I give the plane of velocity and the ball of velocity. They're, oh, they're not the same. They should be the same. I change that. They are the same. Okay. And then I have a time and a time step. And so what I'm going to do is in each time step, I'm going to update the velocity of each object and update the position of each object. Now, the plane's moving at a constant velocity, so it doesn't matter. Look at that little fade out thing. I did that for you. Same program, but just looking at the, the rest of it. So I'm going to I'm going to make this loop. And during this loop, I'm, the first loop, I'm going to move just the plane and the ball together, just constant velocity. So the plane is going to update its position here in line 18, and the ball, the same thing. But it, the, I'm going to give the ball a, the velocity of the plane. They have the same velocity, and I update time. That's it. And then the second part, after that, I'm going to, and this rate tells you how fast to run the animation. It says do 100 loops per second. So now I'm going to, after that, I'm going to drop the package. So the plane's just going to keep moving as it is. The ball's going to change its velocity with this acceleration, which I changed. Okay, I'm going to change it to that negative 436. And then I'm going to change the position based on the new velocity. And then this last part down here just says, if it hits the ground, just stop it. Don't make it go past the ground. And with that, I get this. Drop it. Okay, there it goes. And again, I I think that I might be wrong here. I think that it might drop straight down. It just that I have the camera angle back looking at an angle. I don't know. Okay, but it's still we're still gonna have a lot of fun. Okay, here's the best part. Let's model, let's build a 3D model of a tie bomber. 
in Python. <clears throat> so I'm actually going to use two objects to do this. The first is a cylinder. So in Python, in GlowScript vPython, Web vPython, a cylinder is a 3D object, and it has a couple of important parameters. So here I made a cylinder. Uh, cylinders reserve word. It does not. If you want to use normal Python, you have to import the visual, the vPython library. So the position is the vector location of one end of this cylinder. And then the axis is a vector from one end to the other. So imagine an arrow going from here to there. That's my axis. And then the radius is the radius of that. And I didn't give it a color, so it just made it gray. Okay. So we're going to use that because the tie bomber actually has two cylinders and then two panels. For the panels, I'm just going to make a simplification. I'm going to make a box. So a box is an object in Python. The position is the center of the box. And then the size is the x, y, and z coordinates of the box. Okay, so I've rotated this, right? Because if you want to rotate a box, you have to do something different. So I actually rotated the view after I built it. It goes x is 1, y is 2, and z is 3. So in general, this is the x direction. This is the y direction, and then z, or that'd be for you, is that way. Okay, so then I have I have a box and a cylinder. So I'm going to use two cylinders and two boxes to make my tie bomber. And here we go. Okay, so these are actually dimensions off of an older post I did, so it's actually a little bit off. I didn't use the 9.3. It's a little bit bigger, but it looks the same. So I, I looked at the, the tie bomber, and I made two cylinders and two planes right there, and I lined them up in this way, so they're in the, uh, the axis for these are in the x direction. Uh, these have just a very thin y value, so I have SL is the left down here, that's the left panel, SR is the right one, I have cylinder one and cylinder two, okay, and there you go. And so I just have all those, and I made them gray, um, I didn't make those gray, did I? Oh no, I did. So you can do colors, um, gray 0.6 is 60% gray. You can change it if you want. Uh, and, and just so you can see, it is a 3D object. I can rotate that around. So here's an animation of me rotating around in Python. So you can see, and it, I didn't put everything. I didn't put the, the cross parts. I didn't put the angle parts of this. I, you know, it, it's close enough. It's definitely tie bomberish, right? I think so. I'm not gonna have a zoomed up view anyway, so you can, go to town. You can make it as complicated as you want. But now, how do I move all this stuff together? I actually can make it a new object. I can make a, what's called a compound object in Web vPython. So, <clears throat> the, in, we use this compound and then a list of objects. So I call that all those objects together in their current arrangement, I call it a tie, because it's a tie bomber, right? And then I can define, I, I define the act. So the position of that tie is, imagine a box surrounding all my objects. And the center of that box is the position of my top armor. And you can change that, but that's where it is by default. And then the axis I'm going to set as the vector 1, 0, 0. Now it's an object and I can change how, I can change its visual parameters. I can change its shininess so it's not so shiny. I put it at point 0.4. I can change its position. So I moved it down here, and then I made it point in the y direction. So I want to I want to make a an animation of that of that thing moving up. Okay. I can also give it now a, I can treat it like a normal object. I can give it a velocity, right? Uh, and then I can make the bomb too. And so the bomb, uh, I I turn this emissive to true, so it actually glows because it's a bomb, right? Those bombs glow. And this is a two line. Twenty seven and twenty eight are the same thing. It just if you leave a comma, you can you can wrap it around, and I give the bomb velocity too. And some of these numbers actually are older, but you're going to get the idea. <clears throat> then I need to make the asteroid. So here's my there's my tie bomber right down there. The asteroid is just a big box, and so it's a box that's a very large box, um, and it's it's actually not at z equals zero. I actually that's the center of the box since the box is ten meters wide, uh, that makes the top at, at z equals zero. Okay. And then there's this stucco texture I used um, to make it look like an asteroid just because that's what was there. There is a way you can actually map a picture of that asteroid on here, and, and I didn't do that. Uh, 
but you could do that if you wanted to. So another thing that we need to talk about is the lights. Uh, default, there are two distant lights in vPython. Uh, so I turn one of those off. So I, I turn light number two, which is called light one, uh, I put it as turned off. And then I change the orientation of the other light. I kind of wanted it like right behind here, but actually it's, it's up here looking down. Um, and then I printed it just so I could know where it is. Uh, so you can change that around. I couldn't get it just the way I wanted to, but you can change the lights a little bit. And so here you can see as I rotate around, you can see that the reflection of that light, <clears throat> I'm actually not, I'm rotating the whole object around. The light's constant, right? So you can see that as I do that, the, the shininess, the reflection changes too. So it's just something to play around with. I didn't, I'm not really great with lights. Okay, so here's my tie bomber as seen from the top. Moving along, it's gonna drop the bomb. And then it blows up and it makes it bigger. And then you can rotate around and see it from different angles. And I think that's kind of cool. Okay, now I want to make that other shot with the tie bomber coming straight towards us. I don't want to remake the whole animation. I just want to change the virtual camera location. So you can change the camera in Web v Python, GlowScript. And here's the documents for how to do that. There's a couple of important parameters that we're going to worry about. Number one is this scene.camera.pos. That's the location of the camera. Next, I want to say which way is the camera, which direction is the camera looking? That's scene.forward. It's a vector. And finally, you can't see it here, but you know, imagine that I have the camera looking that way. Who knows which way it's rotated? So I have to define scene.up, and that tells me the up direction for the camera. So I can do all that, and it looks like this. So I'm going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to turn off auto scale. I'm going to put the camera uh, over here in the Z. Well, it's actually up. Remember, because my, my, my plane's up here. I'm putting the camera up here in the Z direction, and then I'm looking the up directions this way, but I'm looking down that way. And if I do that, here's my tie bomber. There's my bomb. I mean, that looks pretty much like Empire Strikes Back. They could have actually made Empire Strikes Back with vPython. Just kidding. But it is fun to reproduce this stuff. Okay. So that's that. Now, I, had, I do have a couple homework assignments for you. Number one, and this is only if you want to. I'm not going to grade it. Okay. But you can add those other tie bombers. You can make, see how realistic you can make this whole thing. See how, what, which is, I know. See how close you can make this to the actual scene. Uh, you can make each tie bomber drop more than one bomb. You can make a better tie bomber. I would try making those curved, those angled brackets on the on the panels, uh, and then fix the lighting too. And then maybe even add in uh, an image of the the asteroid onto that plane. That'd be pretty cool. Okay, so there you go. Happy Star Wars Day. Um, hope you like that. Uh, play around with vPython. I'll give you the link to the codes down below. And that's that. See you next year.